Hello there. The Reform UK Rochdale by-election candidate and the party's staff are now being harassed and even getting death threats. This is getting very, very ugly indeed. So Britain is now at the mercy of a certain demographic which is intent on dictating the Westminster candidates they will allow to stand. And if they don't like you, they will threaten your life, the lives of your family and even threaten to firebomb your businesses. And this comes hard on the heels of our once mother of all parliaments being cowed meekly into subservience to foreign interests by threats of violence to MPs. Threats of violence that will, in all probability, go left unchallenged and unpunished for fear of offending the perpetrators who can just play the phobia and racist cards to get themselves off the hook. And that's exactly what's happening right now. Any challenge to this behaviour by a certain demographic is being met by the inevitable mass spraying up the wall of the phobia word and accusations of racism. Now, a phobia is an extreme or irrational fear of or aversion to something. So I'll ask, what is irrational about the fear from our MPs and candidates receiving death threats from a certain segment of our population? There's nothing irrational about it. It is a perfectly rational response. No one would ever invent the word Far-right phobia, would they? And nowhere in the definition of phobia does it talk about hate either. So calling those with a phobia as hateful is far wide of the mark anyway. Now let's take a look at what's happening in Rochdale just as the by-election approaches tomorrow, shall we? The Reform UK candidate has received death threats and supporting businesses have been told they'll be firebombed unless they remove any leaflets supporting Reform UK. While their candidate, Simon Danchuk, has received direct threats of assault in writing and by video. Now, as a result, a 23-year-old man has been arrested on suspicion of malicious communication. But here's what Superintendent Lucy Smallwood from Greater Manchester Police said. We understand incidents like this can be concerning, but the victim and the public should be reassured that we've made an arrest. In anticipation of the by-election, we had already put increased patrols in place. Is this the future for our once green and pleasant land? Increased police patrols in certain areas in the run-up to elections. And I have to ask, what is the likely outcome? A caution? A slap on the wrist because the prisons are already too full? Any news about that will probably be buried. All this tells me that we're on the verge in the UK of losing that age-old electoral concept of loser's consent. There was enough of that in the political shenanigans following the Brexit vote, wasn't there? But it may become a permanent feature of our politics where certain losing parties believe it is their right to use threats and violence to get their way even after an election. Especially if their demographic is on the rise through birth rate and the amount of legal and illegal immigration our political masters encourage. Is the democratic principle of loser's consent going to be yet another facet of UK culture that certain people will refuse to integrate with? Now, where are the condemnations of these threats against a legitimate parliamentary candidate from the left and from the other candidates in this by-election? Or should I say specifically one of them? I can't see anything of that in the news. Either the other candidates aren't getting such hateful communication or they are keeping it to themselves for fear of offending someone. Wonder which it is. As far as I can see, our weak, wet, woke politicians have bowed to the globalist establishment and decided that ignoring the UK silenced majority is the safest way ahead for them. 
There still seems to be no stomach to face up to the real threat out there. They still fear that threat more than they fear the results of what emerges from the ballot box. Our police are neutered and clueless, or worse, they are supporters of those that make these threats. While the woke left search about the place for any excuse to lay all the blame on the far right. Look at how they're trying to deflect us away from legitimate criticism of certain actions within a certain demographic onto the hurty words of Tory MPs Lee Anderson and Paul Scully. Now, as far as I'm concerned, had more of these politicians spoken up several years ago about this growing sectarian problem that most of the rest of us saw developing many years ago, then maybe the Tories wouldn't be in this electoral mess they've got themselves into. Apart from the forthright Lee Anderson, there are a few Tory MPs now half-heartedly trying to join the fray without upsetting anyone. But it's too little too late. This party has been in government for well over a decade and has overseen the massive legal push to withdraw the freedom of speech from ordinary citizens, while empowering the freedom of expression of those that would do us harm by turning a certain phobia into a brickbat to bash us with. And the outcome for Rochdale, one of the top 5% deprived areas in the UK, is voters in the northern English town of Rochdale say they have little enthusiasm for an election this week, dominated by political disputes over the Gaza war and paving the way for leftist firebrand George Galloway to return to Parliament, reports Reuters. And from what the locals told Reuters, there seems little point in voting there because no one ever does anything for them. Whoever wins on Thursday will have a tough challenge in overcoming a sense of despondency that now runs deeply through Rochdale's voters, continued the Reuters report. Well, especially if the only concern the winner has is the matter of Gaza. The Reform UK leader Richard Tice put out on X that Westminster is bickering over word games while thugs from a certain religious demographic send death threats to his party's candidate. Never has the establishment been so out of touch, so betrayed our safety and security. No, it's far worse than that. They've weakly let external powers take control from them and tear up our country and throw it to the wolves. Just watch them in Parliament. There is absolutely no sign of national pride anymore. No fire in the belly for the UK. As far as I can see, they now just consider the country they represent as a n other area in the world to be centrally controlled by the likes of the UN and the WEF, and some crave the return of EU control as the boss as well. Now, last night, the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, attended and spoke at the 12th British Kebab Awards ceremony. All to much fanfare about diversity and inclusivity, etc., so I wonder if he'll be mentioning the Fish and Chippery Awards that take place in London tonight, where only one single outlet in London made it onto the top 40 list. That's 2.5% of the listed best, whereas London has 13.4% of the UK population. But where Britishness is removed, that's diversity. Where Britishness is anywhere near the majority, it's phobic and racist. No wonder the silenced majority is now fast tiring of their woke BS. Anyway, please do join us on Locals, link in the descriptions box below, and tell us what you think about all this in the comments section. And thank you for watching. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe.